Sean McCormick from lightroomblog.com featured on pixiq.com and in this video I'm going to look at HDR in Lightroom and we're going to do it using HDR Pro basically to merge the files inside Photoshop now these are large files you can see 5600 pixels wide so that means that this is time consuming so I'm not really going to let you see the time consuming bits because literally the merge is going to take four minutes so we're going to jump through those bits and just come back as bits are ready because like I say big files long times it's just the way it is so let's get started so we go photo edit in come down here go to merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop now you can use Photomatics and stuff like that as well but it's probably quickest to show it this way because it's the way it was originally designed so merge to HDR Pro that will then open up Photoshop and then start to process these files and get us into the 32-bit HDR menu where we want to be. Normally this goes into 16-bit, but we just change to 32 and then after that set the white point and then save the file. Okay, so I'll come back to you when that's ready. Okay, so now the file is actually loaded into HDR Pro inside Photoshop. Chances are, if you're coming into HDR Pro for the first time, that you're probably looking at the 16-bit mode or the 8-bit mode. But in this case, what we want to do is go to 32-bit. As you can see, there's much less controls. So there's two things that we need to do. The first thing is we can see here we have an issue here in the clouds. So you click Remove Ghosts to get rid of ghosting. That's where the clouds have moved in between the three shots. Then we bring the white point the whole way over just so we have as much information as possible in the file. And when this goes into Lightroom, it's actually going to look darker than this anyway, but that doesn't matter. So we're just going to click OK, and that will then open the file in Photoshop itself. Inside Photoshop. And you have a couple of options here. We can just save it directly. If we just save this, it will automatically take on the name of the file inside Lightroom. But uh, you can also go File, Save As, and give it a name if you want. And then if we like, we just call it Speech and Sky. It's got kind of a unique name. Let's save it with Pro Photo. So we click Save, and we have the option here for 16, 24 and 32 bits which you can choose from there and different compression types if you so desire. So we choose zip to make it smaller. So click OK and now that's going to actually save the file. Now what will happen is this file will be kind of read into uh, Lightroom itself. But if you, if you are going to be saving a 32 bit file then it's just if you just literally go save it will just save us a 32 bit file and we'll take on the name of one of the files. So I'm going to let that write and now we're going to jump back to Lightroom itself and what's going to happen in a while is going to load it. So there we go. You can see Beach and Sky is now loaded automatically. So even when you do a save as in this case it remembers the name. So now we're going to go into D for develop. So it's going to load and develop. So we can now develop this HDR file inside Lightroom. So the first thing I'm going to mention is that you have plus or minus 10 stops. You've got a huge range of exposure to kind of do some control with this. So I'll push up some clarity. I'm going to bring up the exposure a fair bit to get my whites white. So now we can start to play with pulling highlights and pushing shadows and things like that. Pull back some whites. Maybe darken the blacks. Push the contrast up the exposure a small bit more, push some vibrance. So there we can have a process the file. So you can see that it's quite easy to process files that are then 32-bit HDR files inside Lightroom from there. And the fact that you have so much leeway with exposure is great for different files, especially for Photomatics Pro files, which come in with a slightly different white point than HDR Pro. So hopefully that'll help you get started with creating merged files that you can then process in Lightroom 4.1.